Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. Now 3D printing is a fantastic hobby and there's loads and loads of options for printers you can use, but there's loads and loads of options for materials you can print in as well. And it's very, very easy to get stuck on one and older the same one over and over again because you know how it works, you know the temperatures it prints at, you know what it's capable of, and it's just very, very easy to go on Amazon and say, order again and you can get stuck in a rut. So I thought over the next three or four weeks, I'm gonna try out some new film that I haven't tried out in ages. You know, the ones which you think, oh, that's really, really good for this, but you never use it for that because you just buy PLA every time or PLA plus, or if you're really feeling clever, PLA silk. So I thought, you know what? Let's go out and buy some of the other materials, have a look through and remind myself what's really good about other ones. And this week I've gone out and got some rapid pet g 3d printer filament to see what pet g's got its pros and its cons and what i like about it and what i think you know maybe it's good at and what it's not good at now there's several things you ask yourself when you think about pet g the first of all what is pet g pet g is polythene tetrathalate glycol can't remember what that is then how about this simple song well, I didn't know what Petgy was when I was just a lad. My father gave my nose a tweak and told me I was bad. And then I learned the words to say to save my aching nose. The greatest words you've ever heard and that is how it goes. Oh, polythene terephthalatine glycol. Even though the sound of it will send you off like NyQuil. It kind of warps, it's very hot. The smell is really frightful. Polythene terephthalatine effing glycol. But what makes it better than, say, your usual PLA? Well, it's harder to work with. You've got to get your temperatures a little bit hotter. And yeah, it does warp a little bit if you don't glue your bed, but it's more durable, it's stronger, it has better impact resistance. Chemically, you pour anything on it and it's going to resist it more than say PLA. You can also leave it out in the rain and it won't um, split off like uh, PLA eventually does. But as I say, it's a little harder to work with and you've got to get your temperatures right. You've got to make sure you get your print speeds right. But yeah, you buy Rapid um, Pet G and it's very, very good. So I thought, you know what? Let's print a few strong um, prints, ones that require a little bit extra oomph that PLA just probably wouldn't stand up to. Um, print off a few models, hit them with hammers, and also print off a few tests and a few benches to see how it turns out compared to PLA. So let's get on and print ourselves some Pet G. And no more singing, I promise. Let's give us a try. And here we have the classic Benchy. The blue one here is printed in PLA and the gray one at the back is printed in PET G. Let's have a look at the PLA one first. Um, it's come out quite nicely. I mean, there's some visual artifacts to it. You can see uh, on the arches on the windows either side, there's some little bits and pieces. Uh, 
you can see striations and also layer lines all along the keel there. That's the front bit. But um, yeah, it's not a bad print at all. It's smooth enough and there's no real damage and there's no real uh, discrepancies here. It just, uh, it could be a little smoother and it could be uh, a little more detailed. And the roof there, the uh, sort of tiling along the top seems okay. The chimney seems okay. Yeah, we've got no major problems. Now, let's have a look at the Pet G Benchy. And yeah, as you can see, the uh, arch on the windows, there's no, I, there's no issues there whatsoever. The uh, keel there is a lot smoother and a lot shinier. The, the layer lines are a lot less pronounced. And the whole thing just looks a little more glossy and a little more sharp. I mean, the other one was good, but yeah, this one is much, much better. And I'm, 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 I'm very impressed the way this has come out. But let's see what happens when we compare the two side by side. And side by side, you can see the little imperfections on both of them. I mean, it's a Benchy, so it's designed to test a printer. But um, yeah, I'd say the Pet G one has got a lot less uh, layer lines. It looks glossier. And yeah, you can see if you look around the window as well, the uh, frame around the edge stands out a lot more on the uh, Pet G version. And on the PLA version, it doesn't quite stand out quite so much. So yeah. I think Pet G comes out on top here. With the aesthetics and print quality comparisons out the way, let's try durability. Lump Hammer, PLA Benchy. Let's see what happens if I give it a quick pat, a quick tap, shall we? Ooh, that 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 sounded quite meaty. And yes, um, yeah, there's quite a bit of damage there. The chimney has been smashed straight through the top of the cabin, and um, yeah, that has. Uh, Cause some structural damage there, and yeah, yeah, lots and lots of warping. Apparently, Pet G is a lot tougher. So once again, okay, that felt a lot more bouncy. When I hit that on the top, that actually bounced off. So uh, let's see what damage that has done to the uh, Benchy. Not a lot, actually. A uh, couple of little stress lines there, but the uh, chimney is still attached and none of the uh, structure is particularly broken let's try again same amount of stress same amount of force that was a bit of a bump and yeah that's taken the chimney off but the superstructure seems to be pretty much intact a couple of little cracks but i tell you what for a big hit with a lump hammer that's kind of a lot better than the pla did last one Let's see what happens now. Yep, and finally after the third whack with the lump hammer. Yeah, this one is most definitely dead. Next up, we have got the PLA clamp and the Pet G clamp. I printed both of these Prusa clamps, one in PLA, one in Pet G, just to see the amount of stress you can put on a clamp before it breaks in both the Pet G and the PLA. Just pop this together. Oh yeah, the uh, Pet G one's actually quite tough to put on. Here we go. First of all, let's label this one. This is the Pet G. Bit of Sharpie so that uh, it stays on. And let's clamp this around something soft and pliable, but something you can put a lot of force onto. In this case, a hardback book. And any of you hardback book lovers, don't worry, no hardbacks were hurt during the making of this video. So yeah, I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on this and turning that as hard as I possibly can. And yeah, neither the screw nor the uh, clamp itself is breaking or bending. The book is getting quite compacted though. So yeah, that's a good result. Right, let's see what happens if we try it with the PLA one. First of all, let's uh, mark this one so we can see which one this is. So, P, L, A. And bring on the hardback. Just for fun, you'll notice I'm using the secret diary of Adrian Mole, which I find is a very, very good test hardback. And let's start screwing this on. 
Oh yeah, and also almost immediately I can feel that the uh, the clamp itself is giving. There's uh, a lot of bending going on. So yeah, that's oh, hang on, okay. Yeah, I definitely felt something crack there, but let's carry on turning, see what happens. Yeah, as it's turning, you can feel something clicking and hang on that. Yeah, yeah, something's definitely breaking here. I'm not sure if it's the shaft or not, or the clamp itself. Yeah, there we go. And the screw is gone. So yeah, that's nowhere near as tight as the, uh, I got the pet G one. And then yeah, the shaft just gave, gave out on that one. So yeah, the PLA one is broken straight off into three bits. But yeah, the pet G one carried on going. So yeah, that was some interesting series of tests. I mean, they're hardly scientific, but it's just interesting to see basically how things fare up against each other in a sort of a, a random sort of just sort of violent way. So yeah, PLA, absolutely fantastic stuff. Whereas PET G, or as I like to call it, polythene terephthalate glycol, is absolutely great as well. This one requires a load more heat and it requires a little bit more care and attention when it comes to actually printing with it, but it comes out very, very strong and very, very smooth. Whereas PLA, not quite so smooth, not quite so strong, but prints very, very well and requires a lot less heat and it will print in most circumstances. So yeah, I can understand why people use PLA more than they use PETG. PETG, I say, can get a bit spitty, can get a bit stringy, and yeah, requires a little bit more um, effort to actually get it to stay on the print bed and not to, for the print to go wrong. But if you get it right, you're gonna get a strong, durable, smooth print that looks great and will put up with some serious punishment. So, that's the first part of this uh, four week test. Pet G, absolutely love it. Next week, we're gonna have a quick look at ABS, I promise, no songs. Thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup. If you've used PETG before and you prefer it to uh, PLA or any of the other printing filament um, materials, please leave a comment down below. If you think there's anything else I could have done about this, please leave a comment below as well. Stay happy, stay safe, keep printing. Oh, Polythena Thatulator Hippocampic Glycol. Thank <laughs> you.